will arrive at this storm within the next 90 minutes and confirm that. But you can see a very clearly defined eye wall here. That is showing that this storm is very strong right now. Look at that. It's almost crystal clear by the end of the run here. So this imagery is very impressive and shows us that we have a very dangerous hurricane that is about 600 miles off the coast of Florida right now. Still tracking at the west, uh, towards the west northwest around nine miles per hour. We're expecting this hard turn towards the coastline, really just about due west throughout the weekend, and it'll likely make landfall later than what we were originally anticipating. So this storm is likely going to slow down as it approaches the coastline, and then we'll make landfall somewhere near near Palm Bay, really somewhere along the Florida coastline around one o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. This time frame is likely going to change because you can see the cone of uncertainty here still very large because a lot of factors are in play here. It's looking like this storm could possibly hug the coastline and make a sharp right hand turn. But when that right hand turn does actually happen, that's all dependent on this area of high pressure. How strong this ridge is, that'll determine the exact track of Dorian and where exactly it makes the landfall. So looking at just a couple of models, the Barron model is in the white here. This is the one we have in house. This is the GFS. You can see the spread here already and whether or not this storm will interact with the Bahamas. Barron model has the landfall much earlier on Monday. The GFS slows this storm drastically slowing as we move into the start of the work week. This could create a lot of flooding along the coastline as that slow motion will create torrential rainfall totals upwards of a foot possible along the South Florida coastline. So this is the Barron model once more showing the rainfall totals potentially upwards of a foot near the West Palm Beach area. So high rainfall totals if this does start to hook up towards the right and travel up the eastern coastline that could create heavy rainfall all the way from South Florida up through Jacksonville as we move later into the work week. The effects here not looking likely. We're not going to feel much of the effects of Dorian at all as we're on the dry side of the storm and it really is a beautiful day all across the area. Here's a live look outside right now. Clear, crystal clear skies. Perfect weather for high school football. It is a little warm though. A little bit warmer than this time yesterday. We're in the upper 80s, low 90s right now. 93 is the warm spot in Jasper. 91 in Tuscaloosa. 90 in Moundville as well as Alabaster, upper 80s right now in Coleman. Overnight tonight, we will see our temperatures fall not quite as far as where they have been the last couple of days. It has been a little chilly to start off yeah, both Thursday and this morning, but we'll be a few degrees warmer in the mid to upper 60s, I expect, by tomorrow morning with clear skies to start out the weekend. We'll see a mostly sunny sky throughout the day, a few clouds by the afternoon. Notice a few stray showers down to our south and east. Not many of us going to see the rainfall each afternoon, but the better chances are definitely south and east of the 5920 corridor. Or both Saturday and Sunday, really not feeling any effect of Dorian into next week as well. So the holiday will stay mainly dry for us. We will be progressively warmer as we move throughout the weekend. The Alabama forecast tomorrow uh, looking good in Atlanta as well as in Dallas. We could see a few showers possible. Temperatures will be in the 80s for Auburn's kickoff. Storm Team 7-day forecast looking very quiet for us. Obviously, if there's a major shift in the track of Dorian, then our Storm Team 7-day forecast will change, but pretty good confidence right now that we will not be